when you come to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. The quitter will never take you down the road you want to travel. I believe we all have a winner in us. There is a winner inside of you. Sometimes we just have uh, been around negativity for way too long. Develop the mindset of a winner. The truth is, most people give up on their dream. Most people give up on their dream to live the average lifestyle. But it really doesn't matter what most people do. What do you do? Because you are different. You will never give up on your dream. You will never not listen to the average. You will always listen to the winner in you. You will believe in yourself when no one else does. You will believe in yourself when you have no reason to believe. And you will never, ever quit. I know some of you are going through a rough time right now. Some of you are going through the fight of your life. Fighting for your future. Fighting for your career. Fighting for your family. Some of you are fighting for your life. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Do not give in. I know life can be tough. I know life can wear you down. But if you just stick it out, even if you don't get the result you will find, the character you show will be your reward. The fighting spirit you develop will be the reward, and it will serve you well for the rest of your life. Fight for what you want now, or fight against what you don't want later. You choose. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare settle. Don't you dare get back down. Not today or any other day. When the tough moments come, never forget, you are in that moment writing your own legacy. In that tough moment, you are setting the standard for your character. Do you have the character? Well, do you? When you come up to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. When you make a commitment to yourself, you make sure you see it through. Never, ever quit. Even if you don't get the result, you will find the character you show will be your reward. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare ever settle. And don't you dare ever back down. Fight for what you want or fight against what you don't want at a later time. And always know that God is right there with you. Just allow God to guide and direct you. And you will always be a winner. Good morning, good morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an author, an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can also see a video version on this on YouTube, on channel, Take Your Life Back Today show. As you can see, it's still dark, but I want you not to ever put yourself in others' shoes. As humans, we have this habit of putting ourselves in the shoes of another living being and image how their experience would be like. For an example, my friends, you might see a handicapped beggar on the roadside looking for food in a garbage can and immediately get a sick feeling to your stomach because in that moment, you are trying to put yourself in the shoes of the beggar and imagine what it must be like for him to live that way. We also use the term for it called empathy. But in truth, my friends, Whenever you put yourself in the shoes of another person, you will always get a very skewed idea of what's really going on because the level of um, uh, consciousness you are at, um, at his, not the level of consciousness the other person is at and the experiences are always personal. Friends, those uh, personal experiences determined by the level of consciousness in a living being in that moment. It's like you're trying to put yourself in the shoes of an animal and imagine what it must be feeling. One reason why so many animal activists feel so much suffering within uh, their themselves. Because they constantly keep projecting themselves into the shoes of the animals, imagining what the animals must be going through and getting completely skewed picture of reality because the consciousness level of the animal is not the same as the consciousness level of a human being who's projecting him or herself into the animal's uh, experience. Friends, things are never what they seem uh, uh, to you from the outside. Always remember that your projections are purely based on your level of consciousness. So when you look at a person outside 
you and try to imagine what he or she must be going through, you are doing so from your level of consciousness. And so uh, you can never understand the accurate experience that they are going through because their level of consciousness is uh, different from yours. Maybe higher or it might be lower at that particular moment. You can verify this in your own mind. Do you remember the days of your life as a baby? Say when you were two years old or five years old or even ten years old. You have, you may have uh, have some dazed remembrance of stuff that happened uh, back then, but you you can't recollect most of your days uh, the way you can recollect your days after you were 25 years old or so. Because when you're a child, your consciousness level was totally low. Whereas now, as an adult, your consciousness level is uh, much higher. But in your brain, you can put yourself back into your childhood days and relive some negative experiences from your present level of consciousness and um, uh, imagine how terrible everything was. Because in truth, when these things really happened in actuality, they were a totally different experience. As a child, you were mostly in a daze and went through life almost asleep, through, uh, 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 though your body moved around and did whatever was required for its uh, survival back then. Friends, a lot of people just don't get the simple reality of life that your experiences are dictated by your level of consciousness in the now. And it's not possible for you to imagine accurately what your experience would be, uh, would uh, have been like in the past or to imagine that someone else's experience must be like. You can only know what your experience is like right now everything else is just uh, imagination when you empathize with someone who is uh, who you perceive is suffering you also suffer with that person but your suffering would come from your level of consciousness which would not be the suffering that that particular person is going through based on their level of consciousness so you will always have an inaccurate picture of what's going on and in most cases would torment yourself by uh, projecting a situation in a totally skewed way. Empathy is great, but it puts you in a negative state of being. It's not serving any good to this reality in any way. It just perpetuates the suffering. I'm saying you should always care and put yourself in other people's shoes, but be careful you don't do it too much. The now is always simple. The only way you can experience the now is, is in your personal experiences with your level of consciousness. So it's always a personal now. And if you just stay with the now without projecting into the past or into the future, you will realize that the now is very simple. It's, the fr uh, it's free of problems, it's easily manageable, and there is nothing overwhelming in it. All the overwhelming or suffering-based thoughts arise when you try to put yourself into the future situation that's not uh, now or into a past that happened at a lower level of consciousness than what it is now or into the shoes of another living being whose level of consciousness you uh, can never know. I call all these hypothetical situations and I never encourage any discussion around the hypothetical uh, situations because that's not how reality is. Hypothetical situations will always give you a totally skewed picture of what reality really is like any given moment. Most, uh, most doctors have um, and, and movie stories are written based on hypothetical situations. When I say doctors, uh, uh, psychiatrists, by trying to imagine what it must be like to be in the shoes of some other being. You can watch movies where animals seem to talk about their problems and start believing that that's how animals are uh, perceiving their reality. When in truth, it's just a human projecting his perceived experiences into an animal. I can state easily that humans, even as children, have the highest consciousness levels 
uh, compared to any species on the planet because their brain is much more developed. But, of course, there are varying levels of consciousness among humans. Some are at a high level of consciousness. Some are at a very low level of consciousness, even as adult. Some humans even die with the same level of consciousness that they uh, had when they were 10 years old because their brain was not able to grow in awareness mostly due to physical limitations. I hope this all kind of makes sense to you because your level of consciousness is not always the same. Remember that your own level of consciousness in the brain is not always uh, at the same level. It keeps dipping or increasing at different times. The highest it can go to, to would decide your actual depth of awareness, but it's quite possible for your level of consciousness to dip to the level of almost a sleep state even when you are awake and moving around. Friends, for an example, when you are driving a car, sometimes you can uh, just be lost and not even know how you reached home. There are also uh, people who do some uh, miraculous things and then claim that they have no idea how they did it. That's because in that moment, the consciousness, consciousness of their brain had switched off and was taken over by the consciousness of their wholeness, which made them accomplish a relatively miraculously feat from their human standards. This happens especially during the cases of emergency. One uh, can later look back and imagine le several le stories about what really happened, but at the moment their experience was totally dictated by their level of consciousness in their brain at that particular moment. Look, it's finally getting bright out. You can actually see me. Always remember that uh, uh, from a human perspective, your experiences are totally dictated by the level of consciousness in your brain at that given moment. When a person uh, 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 hypnotizes you, he basically just manages to switch off the most, uh, most of the consciousness in your brain while keeping you in a semi-waking state so that you respond to the commands without any consciousness, in, uh, uh, conscious interpretation of it. So you don't really remember what you did in uh, the trance because of the conscious part of your brain was switched off or dimmed out. We are aware of the waking state and sleep state of a brain, but there is also a semi-waking state of the brain where it is lost to a consciousness but awake, sometimes like the state you are uh, in while sleepwalking. This is the state of the uh, uh, hypnotist tune into. The bottom line, my friends, of the understanding is to recognize that it's never possible to imagine what someone else is really going through, except through a skewed projection. Inaccurate projections are the cause of close to 90% of our suffering. That's why uh, the simple pointer to just say, uh, to stay in the now instead of uh, making fearful projections about the past, the future, or the living beings outside you. Next time you feel like putting yourself in someone else's shoe, do so while understanding that it's not an accurate projection in any sense. It's an imagination in your happening from your level of consciousness. A hypothetical situation. It's never exactly the reality of what they're going through. Call me at 844-405-HELP. Together, we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. And remember, a simple smile to a total stranger can help that stranger forever and it can change your life. May God bless each and every one of you and have a great day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.